The rain trickled softly on the roof like a light finger tapping. George, the previous owner, was down in the basement, digging into the foundation, deep into the earth with just a pickaxe and shovel. Covered in mud and his own vomit, George clawed at his head, pulling out large chunks of his own hair. He was practically bald for a man in his thirties who had once had such vibrant, luscious hair. His fingernails were bloody, rubbed raw down to the stumps. This was the normal George. In the past few weeks, George had lost a great deal of weight, barely over a hundred pounds. His skin was pulled tight, burned red from head to toe. Through the muck of vomit and diarrhea, George, despite his weakened state, continued to dig. He reported to his friends and family in the previous weeks of increased headaches, bouts of dizziness, and constantly nauseous. At one point, he stopped answering their calls. Despite their pleas for him to seek medical attention, his friends and family figured he needed some time alone after his breakup, allowing him some time to get situated in his new house. When the authorities found his decaying corpse, lying in a vast hole in the basement, the mystery and conspiracy theories came in full swing. God, I wish I knew all about George before I bought the house, before everything had changed. I purchased the house that autumn. It was only listed on the market for a few weeks before I put an offer in. I visited the house a few times with a realtor. Two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. Perfect for what I needed at the time. The only thing out of the ordinary was the fully cleared out basement, down to the concrete base. The realtor told me the owners were fixing the foundations as an explanation for the covered up hole on the floor. I thought nothing of it as my knowledge of homes was not too vast. One trip to the house later, and I noticed the hole in the basement was fully filled with fresh concrete. I put in an offer, which was accepted by the sellers in three days. They were eager to sell, according to my realtor, moving quickly on the closing. My first two nights at the house, I started feeling strange. There was a constant shooting pain inside my head. I would head out to work, go out with a few friends, and the headaches would lessen. When I came home, I noticed they started back up. I triple checked the carbon monoxide detectors, but nothing came up out of the ordinary. The waves of dizziness came in quick after. Following an extended weekend indoors, I didn't feel comfortable walking down the large flight of steps, fearing I'd take a tumble. The disorientation was troubling. I was losing my sense of time and direction. My heart was all over the place, no semblance of direction it was heading in. I chalked it up to just the creative artist block. Maybe I had that new flu everyone was so concerned about, I assured myself. When Tuesday hit, it was time to head back to work. My body was fully drained. Despite resting all of the long weekend, I felt as if I hadn't slept a minute. The pounding headache echoed deep inside my skull. As I put on my suit Tuesday morning on full autopilot, the sun was barely rising in the sky. I failed to notice the blood stain on my shirt. This was no ordinary nosebleed. It was flowing hard. The shock that hit me as I saw myself in the mirror for the first time that morning, as if I had been hit in the nose with a hockey puck at close range. The crimson blood stained my face and the top of my shirt. Blood was still slowly trickling down. Waves of dizziness hit me quick. The room spun like a twisted carousel. My stomach churned and bubbled inside me, forcing me to dash towards the toilet. As I heaved my dinner and stomach bile, I frantically texted my boss, saying I wasn't coming in that day. I awoke on the couch, a white washcloth stained bloody red from my nose. My body ached with each slight movement. The dull lights in the house burned my eyes. I drove my head into the nearest pillow, feeling the headache wash over me again. The rest of the week, I saw no improvements in my health. Constant headaches, nosebleeds and vomiting, this bright red rash had started appearing on my body, sore, stinging to the touch. It wasn't until that Friday that I rushed to the hospital when my hair started falling out. I had lost a good deal of weight that week, barely able to keep down any food. I was skinny, the reddish rash covering most of my body. My hair was coming out in thin strands all the way to the ER. I sat in the cold emergency room waiting for the doctor. Nurses took my vitals. The stinging pain radiated through my body as they gave me an IV drip. The bright white room burned my eyes. 
I lay down on the examination table, feeling that rumbling in my stomach building while the doctors and nurses ran various tests. After what felt like a century, they finally returned. Three burly nurses came in full white protective suits. The doctor, who was previously in his scrubs, was also in the same protective suit. The nurse grabbed me hard under my arms. My limp legs swayed underneath me. Through my disoriented state, I could barely mutter out, What's going on? I was brought into a square room, glass panes on all sides. Like a giant shower room, large shower heads protruded from the ceiling. I collapsed onto the floor, my skin burning brighter. Sounds of water running filled my head as the pipes reverberated around me. The showers exploded open, covering me in a watery-like oil substance. My skin burned as the liquid covered me. Darkness swept over me. The last images of the stainless steel shower heads raining down on me. I awoke some time later, laying in a hospital bed, IVs poking out all along my arms. The harpy sensor beeped softly in the background. I was alone in the dark room. My head ached slightly. I stirred in bed, feeling weak and achy. Footsteps echoed down the hall. A doctor and a team of nurses stepped into the room. What happened? I muttered to them. Eric, how are you feeling? A nurse asked. Tired, I guess. Are you feeling nauseous? Another nurse asked, scribbling something on a notepad. Not at the moment. I wriggled in bed, feeling the pain shoot at my spine. The head doctor stepped forward. Eric, I need to ask you some important questions. Where have you been these past few weeks? I thought for a second, feeling like my memory had been wiped. Just home, been feeling sick all week. Did you visit any places? Were you out of the country? The doctor asked, taking a seat next to me. No, I was home. I had just moved in not too long ago. That's impossible, one of the nurses quipped silently. Easy. The main doctor shushed her away. Listen, Eric, you were exposed to high levels of radiation, none that I've ever seen in my 24 years on the job, especially not in this town. Now, if you are telling me that you were home all week and hadn't left the country recently, then something does not add up here. How long was I out? I mumbled, feeling a wetness run down my nose. The nurse came over and wiped blood from my nose. A few days. We have it under control and the levels are lowering. You may still feel some of the side effects of the radiation poisoning. Radiation poisoning? His words seared into my head, drowning out whatever the doctor was talking about. Where the hell was there radiation near me, I wondered. My mind kept flashing back to the hole in the basement for some strange reason. Eric, Eric, the doctor snapped. Yes, sorry, what were you saying? You are lucky to be here, Eric. Any longer in that house and you wouldn't be here with us today. Radiation is highly toxic. It's a miracle you lasted that long in there. I managed to nod my weak head as the doctor continued to speak. Emergency services have been contacted. Last I heard, they were heading towards your house, looking to investigate. Rest up. We want to keep you here for a few more days before the radiation is fully taken control of. My head rolled to the side, feeling the darkness wash over me once again. I was nudged awake by a familiar touch. Alison, my sister, was next to me, her mask covering her face. Oh, Eric... You gave us all such a scare, she cried. I'm okay, sis. I feel a lot better, I groaned. What is going on in the house? You gotta see what's going on there. It's something out of a horror movie. My head felt like rolling ocean waves as Alison spoke. They found something, Eric. The levels in your house. God, I don't even know how it's possible you're in there. Radiation is seeping into your home. They think it's coming from the basement. You could have died. Alison crashed her head into my side, her tears standing down my blanket. It's okay. I'm still here now. Giving Alison a weak smile. Good. Well, the doctors say that you can leave in a couple of days. You can come stay with me, okay? Sure. Sounds good, sis. 
there's just one thing. Yeah, what's that? Alison asked. I closed my eyes. The hole in the basement was creeping back in my head again. Images of that hole had been appearing in my thoughts and dreams since I got here, like it was drawing me in. I just need to get something from the house, okay? Alison sat back down in a chair. No, Eric, that's not possible. Your house is being condemned. Everything inside it, it's poisoned by the radiation. Alison continued to speak, expressing her worries and pleading to me I couldn't go back. I watched my reflection on the blank television screen. Seeing my red, burned skin stare back at me like I was some charred ghoul. The blisters on my skin were full, ready to burst. But I was planning to get back to the house, despite what Alison or anyone else would say. The hole in the basement was growing stronger in my mind.